Welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I'm Stevie B. Happy to have you all with me today as we're rocking the squid suit. That's right. Today we're going to talk about armor plates. I made a video about armor earlier this month. Today, though, we're going to talk specifically about armor plates. So let's get started. Big sips. So we're going to look specifically at the AP line. So if you notice, we've got AP12, AP30, AP36, and yes, they're all electric plates. So what's the deal? They're all AP plates, they're all electric. So why the different numbers? Well, if we look, the first thing people notice is that AP36 has 36 ped TT. AP30 has 30 ped TT. And AP12 has 12 ped TT. That's the first thing they notice is that if you look at the name, the name will tell you as far as the AP plates go, what type of protection it provides and the TT value, it's in the name. However, that's not the important part. The important part is if we actually look at the protections, an AP12 gives you 12 electric protection. An AP30 gives you 30 electric protection. An AP36 gives you 36 electric protection. Now we can also notice that the durabilities are different. The higher you go, the higher the durability, which is good. That means less decay. More protection, less decay, always a good thing. However, the important takeaway is A, the TT value is going to match the name, but B, the protection is going to match the name. That's why I'm looking specifically at the AP line of plates, because we can then take this and we can extrapolate it to every other armor plate in game. Now, on other armor plates, let's look at the Pulsar Armor Plate Gold Rush. The, the name doesn't necessarily tell you the protections. You have to actually look. So in the case of the Pulsar Armor Plate Gold Rush, it provides electric protection for 25 and stab protection for 5. It also has TT value of 41. So we'll get to that later. But point being, you can take this basic concept of what the protection is. Forget the TT value part. That's only to do with the AP sign. Well, uh, AP line, but we can take the part that we're going to talk about about the protection it provides, and we can then use this for to look at other plates and their stats and how they can help us out. So we know that the AP 12 electric provides us 12 electric protection, the 30 electric gives us 30 electric protection, 36 electric gives us 36 electric protection. That's great. When would we need this? Well, let's look at my ascension armor. We'll notice that the Ascension Armor protects against burn, cut, impact, pin, and stab. It does not provide any protection for electric. None. Notice it's not even on the list. So let's say I was wanting to add electric protection to it. I can take an AP12 or a 30 or 36, whatever. I simply drag and drop onto my selected piece of armor. And bam, now electric is added to the list and I get 12 protection because that's the protection that an AP-12 electric provides. So I just added a whole new type of protection to this armor set. Now, what if the armor set already provided protection from electric? Well, let's look at my ghost set. If you notice, my ghost set already provides 11 total protection from electric. So if I add an AP-12 to that, now I'm going to have 23 electric protection. Bam! 23 electric protection. So it can either add, plates can add a new protection type to an armor that doesn't have that protection type at all, or they can increase the amount of protection an armor provides. So this is why plates are really, really good and really, really useful. Now, here's the problem, the, the, the pro and con. What if I'm hunting an all-electric mob? There's not very many of them in game, but let's say I could find one. What if I'm hunting an all-electric mob with my Ascension without plates? Well, the cool part of Ascension is I would get the skill gain buff, but I would have no protection. So even though I'm wearing my armor, I would take the full damage that that mob was dealing because it provides no electric protection. However, I would also be incurring no decay which would be really cool because I'm getting that 10% skill gain buff, but that would probably result in a lot of fapping cost. So if that was the case, if I wanted to hunt that mob, let's say I wanted the skill gains from Ascension, 
but I also want to be protected from the mob with some type of armor. I could go with my ghost armor, but then I wouldn't be getting the skill gains. But if I take my AP-12 electric plate and put it on my ascension armor, now I could use my ascension armor to get skill gains, and by having the AP electric plate on there, I would also be protected from electric. So I would be getting the best of both worlds. But how do I know that the AP-12 is the one I need? How do I know I don't need an AP-24 or an AP-30 or an AP-36? How do I know how much protection I actually need? And this applies not just to plates, this applies to armor itself. Because you'll notice, armor provides different amounts of protection. Whereas I'm getting 8 protection across the board with Ascension, I am getting all kinds of different numbers with Ghost. I'm getting 1 here, 11 here, 12, 15, 11, 19, 1, 1, 13. So how do I even know how much protection I need? Well, let me show you guys something. This is why I'm in the squid suit not wearing any armor. If I go to main, I'm going to drag this up here where you guys can see it, and I'm going to turn off the fat, the fat channels and the trade channels for a second. So I'm going to pull main up so you guys can see, and I'm going to go run into the middle of a stack of mobs, specifically low-level attackers. Now, I could be looking at my health bar, but it's easier to see it in main whenever I've got chat logging enabled. I'll pull this up here so you can see it too, because you're going to see the same thing on my health bar that you're going to see over here. So I'm going to run into the stack of attackers and let them attack me. I took 9.5 points of damage, 10 points of damage, 10.7, 14.1, 10.1, 6.6, 13, 8.8. 8.2, And I'm dead. Now, first of all, for people who tell me that dying in this game doesn't give you points... Um, I would like to prove you wrong, because even at my ridiculously high defense levels, I just gained 0 0.1514 experience in my dodge skill. Okay, so people who are brand new players and want to tell me, Zykeon doesn't work, they, they did something to it, it doesn't work like that anymore. Yeah, it does. If it still does it for me, at my ridiculously high defense skill levels, I promise it does it for you. Now, I'm not getting very much, I got 0 0.1514 skills, but it's something. For you guys that are brand new and low level, it would be much, much higher than that. But that's not the important part. We'll make a whole different video about that. The important part is look at these numbers. See if you see a pattern here when it comes to the, the amount of damage that I actually took. Let's go back to where I very first started taking damage. All the way to the top. Okay, I took 9.5 points of damage, then 10, then 10.7, 14, 10, 6, 13, 8, 8, 16, 16, 14, 10, 8, 6, 10, 14, 14, 14, 11, 10, 11, 12, 16. Are you noticing anything? Right. So this is what we're looking at. How much damage am I actually taking? Now, I know attackers don't do electric only attacks. They don't do electric at all. I know they do like several different damage types and it's not electric. Forget that for a moment. Let's assume that the attacker, the mob that just attacked me, let's assume that it did only electric and we knew that it did only electric. And I was trying to figure out how much electric protection I need. Well, clearly, all these numbers, 16, 12, 10, 11, 11, 14, 14, 14, 10, 6, 8, they're all going to be right around the number 12. Now, there's a few that were 14, but most of them were 10, 11, 14, somewhere in there. There was a few 6s, a few 8s, right? 
So I would want to use the AP12 plate because I would only need 12 protection. It would be a total waste for me to use an AP24 or an AP30 or an AP36. If they're not going to hit me for 36, why would I need 36 protection? That'd be a waste. That's three times the protection I need. They're only hitting me for about 12. If they're only hitting me for 12, why would I use an AP24 that provides twice that? It can absorb 24 protection, and they're only hitting me for about 12. That would be a waste. I'd be wasting money, wasting decay, right? That would be insane. This is what those protections mean. When you look at how much damage you're taking, the points of damage you're taking, that is exactly what the armor is telling you. This is how much of that damage we're going to absorb. So let's assume I had repaired my ghost so it was full TT, and it's providing 11 electric protection. They're hitting me for about 11. I don't need to add plates to this. There it would be a waste to add plates to this. Now, if they were hitting me for 24, I could simply add an AP-12 plate to it, take my protection to 23, bada-boom, bada-bing, I'm done. Right? If I added an AP-24, that would be stupid. Now I'm over-protecting myself. It doesn't give me any additional benefit. So, the biggest takeaway, the, the light bulb that comes on for people, is when you look at the amount of damage you're taking, and you look at the protection that the armor is providing, and then you look at the protection the armor plates are providing, these numbers are, that you're seeing on armor plates and armor, it's actually talking about the actual points of damage you're taking. That's what it's talking about. The hard part is figuring out which mobs do which damage types, and then how much of the damage you're taking comes from this damage type versus the other. If the mob is like foul, foul only do impact damage. So I know all the damage I take from foul are impact. But let's say it was a mob that did half impact, half electric. Well, how much of the protection is come? How much of this damage is from electric, and how much is from impact? That's where it gets a little bit tricky. And that's why, if you look on the wiki, it'll actually tell you this mob does 30% impact, 70% electric. So then you can look at how much damage you're taking and say, well, 30 of it's coming from impact, 70 from electric. So you can split the percentages. So knowing that, yes, there's a lot of math involved. But hopefully this will help you guys better understand not only the protection on your armors, but hopefully it will help you understand the protections on plates like AP plates or Pulsar plates. And then hopefully knowing this, you guys will be better able to match the damage that you're taking with the armor and plate combinations that you need. If you work out the math ahead of time, it should be really easy to know what armor and what plate combinations are going to be best for the mob that you're going to be hunting, especially with the information that we have on Wiki that, generally speaking, will usually tell us this mob does this type of an attack, here's the damage types, here's the percentage breakdowns. Usually the hardest part is figuring out what they're actually going to hit you for and then just doing the math with it. And the easiest way to do that is just get naked or strip down to your bare bones. Like, usually I'm in my blue undies, but now that I've got squid suit on, I just leave squid suit on because that way it doesn't incur decay. But just literally go let that mob attack you and kill you a couple of times. Figure out the damage amounts that you're taking. Use the percentages from the wiki. Bada bing, bada boom. Now you know the protections you need. Go through your armors. See which armors provide those protections. And then do the math and figure out, do I need to add plates? Is the armor good enough on its own? Does it need more protection? If it needs more, how much more? Bada beam, bada boom. Add some plates to it. So this works across the AP spectrum. If you're looking at AP cold plates, they work the same way. AP impact, AP acid. The plates are named after not just their TT value. They're named after the type of an attack they protect against and how much protection they provide. Like I said, all you've got to do is go out there and I got... Oh, no, no skills awarded that time. All you have to do is go out there and figure out how hard are they hitting me. What percentage of that hit is coming from this attack versus that attack? And then just plan your armor and your plates accordingly. This is also true with pulsar plates. Although the problem with pulsar plates is they're not actually named after what they protect against. And this is why I think the AP plates are so genius. Mindark really dumbed it down, which is great because people still don't understand that. They, they'll put an AP 60 plate on against only 12 damage that they're taking. So they're wasting 48 protection. 
Okay, so Pulsar Plate 2. It's going to give me Electric Protection of 25, Stab Protection of 5. A Pulsar Plate 10 is going to give me Cut Protection of 7, Impact Protection of 20, Stab Protection of 11. So notice with the Pulsar Plates, which Pulsar Plates originated on Arcadia, by the way, for those of you who didn't notice. So with the Pulsar Plates, the name of the plate doesn't necessarily tell me what protection it provides. I actually have to look and I have to go through them one at a time to figure that out. But they provide all kinds of different protections based off the type of plate. So Pulsar 6. Cut 5, pin 9. Well, let's say that I needed a pulsar plate to give me electric protection and stab protection. And let's say I needed a lot of electric protection and a little bit of stab protection. The pulsar 6 would do me no good. It doesn't protect against either of those. So I wouldn't want it. The cut impact stab of pulsar plate 10 is great that it's got stab in there, but I need a lot of electric protection and a little bit of stab. This doesn't have any electric, and it's got a decent amount of stab, so I don't need that. But Pulsar Armor Plate 2 would be absolutely perfect, because I need a lot of electric, a little bit of stab, 25 and 5, if that was the ratio the mob was doing. Let's say the mob was hitting me for exactly 30, <coughs> and I could work out the numbers to know 25 of that was coming from electric and 5 from stab, and I had armor that didn't protect against electric or stab at all, but gave me a cool buff, put that armor on, throw a Pulsar Armor Plate 2 on it, but a bing bada boom, I'd be golden. So I hope that makes sense. It's really not that complicated. And the more I talk about it, the more I'm probably confusing people. So I'm just going to leave it there. Just go let the mob attack you. Find out how much damage you're taking. Use the wiki to figure out what damage types that mob does and in what percentages. So then you know out of the 10 points of damage you took, if it's doing 30% one attack and 70% another, you know chances are... 30% of that 10 points, so 3 points of it came from the first attack, 7 points likely came from the second attack. Go to your armor, figure out if it protects against those attacks and in what ratio to what amount, and then if you have no protection against an attack that you need protection from, or if you need to boost your protection, I use an armor plate to do it, and now you guys know how the armor plates work as far as those protection numbers. Big thing being, these numbers here are the equivalent of the numbers on your armor and your armor plates. You just have to figure out, using outside info like wiki, of these numbers here, what portion came from one attack versus the other. That's the hardest part. It's just doing the basic math there. So I'm going to leave it there for today. I know I've probably blown a lot of people's minds. I know a few of you watching this video are like, yeah, that's really rudimentary, elementary level information. I know that, but you would be surprised how many players don't know this. I would say probably 95% of players do not understand armor protections, armor plate protections, mixing the two, and how to just get attacked by a mob to figure out how much damage you're even actually taking. I would say the vast majority of players do not know that, probably 95%. So I'm going to leave it there for today. Sip, sip, smack, smack. I hope this information comes in handy for you guys with the upcoming Mayhem event. I'll talk more about it whenever I cover the upcoming Mayhem prior to Easter Mayhem 2023, but we'll leave it there for today. Head over to EarnPad.com because when you earn, we earn by far the best way you guys can help support us. Just log into EarnPad.com, use the links on the website to go to Hideout. Hideout.tv will automatically add us as a redemption option for your points. No additional effort needed on your part. It's added automatically when you use the links on EarnPad.com to go to Hideout.tv. Guys, as every YouTuber says, hit that subscribe button because we've got a ton of people that watch the channel regularly that don't subscribe. Like every single video because there's always a hater. And hit that bell notification button to be notified when we put new videos out. When you do those three things, YouTube gives us more exposure, which is great for us. But the bigger thing is that puts our videos in front of people who play PC-based games, MMOs, sci-fi MMOs, real cash economy games. And a lot of times, it's the first time that person's ever heard of Entropia Universe. And they start watching the videos, they start watching the channel. Next thing you know, they're downloading Entropia. Now they're a part of the game, they're a part of the economy. They might be a future society mate, they might end up buying something off you on auction someday. All because you hit those three buttons, and because you hit those three buttons, they saw their first Entropia video. So yes, it helps us, but it helps the game, the economy, and it potentially helps you too. 
So do us a favor, do the game a favor, and do yourself a favor. Hit those three buttons. Easter Mayhem is probably right around the corner. I said probably two to three weeks away. We've got a lot of content left to come for you guys. So sip, sip, smack, smack. Y'all know the rest. Take care, Stevies.